What if a single aircraft could reach space, destroy enemy missiles with lasers, and fly at speeds that would take you from New York to Los Angeles in under 30 minutes? The race for air dominance has never stopped evolving since the Wright brothers first took flight. But what comes after the most advanced stealth fighters we see today? The answer might just change warfare forever. Today, we're going deep into the Pentagon's most classified future plans. The USAF's vision for what many military experts are calling the seventh generation fighter. A machine so advanced, it will make today's F-35 look like a biplane from World War I. The United States Air Force has long maintained America's edge in the skies, but the next leap forward isn't just about flying higher or faster. It's about reaching the stars themselves. By the 2050s, American pilots might be flying hypersonic aircraft capable of exiting Earth's atmosphere, armed with weapons straight out of science fiction. If you agree that America needs to stay ahead in air defense technology, type yes in the comments. To understand where we're going, we need to know where we've been. Fighter aircraft have evolved through distinct generations, each representing a significant leap in technology and capability. First-generation fighters emerged in the late 1940s like the F-86 Sabre, featuring the first jet engines but still relying on machine guns and basic radar. The second generation, including the F-104 Starfighter, brought supersonic speeds and missile technology to aerial combat in the 1950s. Third-generation fighters of the 1960s and 70s like the iconic F-4 Phantom introduced multi-role capabilities and improved avionics. The fourth generation arrived in the 1970s and 80s with aircraft like the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon, featuring fly-by-wire controls, advanced radar, and superior maneuverability. Our current frontline fighters, the fifth generation including the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, introduced stealth technology, advanced sensors, and network-centric warfare capabilities. The sixth generation, currently under development as part of the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD program, promises unmanned options, directed energy weapons, and artificial intelligence integration. But what comes next? What technologies and capabilities will define the seventh generation, and how will they reshape the battlefield? The seventh generation fighter aircraft, projected for deployment beyond the 2050s, won't just be an incremental improvement. It represents a fundamental rethinking of what an aircraft can be. Unlike today's fighters that operate exclusively within our atmosphere, these revolutionary aircraft are being designed with space operations in mind. They'll be capable of exiting and re-entering Earth's atmosphere, effectively blurring the line between aircraft and spacecraft. Speed will reach unprecedented levels, with hypersonic flight allowing these fighters to travel at over Mach 5. That's more than 3,800 miles per hour, or over 6,125 kilometers per hour. At these speeds, a fighter could reach any point on Earth within two hours. But speed and range are just the beginning. These aircraft will likely incorporate directed energy weapons, lasers capable of shooting down incoming missiles or enemy satellites. The miniaturization of power sources needed to generate these high-energy beams is already being researched by the Air Force Research Laboratory. Stealth technology, already a cornerstone of modern fighters, will reach new heights. Advanced radar-absorbing materials, coupled with aerodynamic designs that minimize thermal signatures, could make these aircraft virtually undetectable by even the most sophisticated sensors. The question remains, will these aircraft be manned or unmanned? The current thinking suggests they might be optionally manned, with a human pilot when needed but capable of fully autonomous operation for missions too dangerous or demanding for human pilots. Let's take a closer look at the game-changing hypersonic capabilities being developed for these future fighters. Hypersonic flight presents enormous challenges. At speeds above Mach 5, air friction generates enough heat to melt conventional aircraft materials. How will pilots survive such extreme conditions? Advanced cooling systems and protective gear are being developed. But some experts suggest these fighters might need to be unmanned due to the physical stresses involved. The propulsion systems needed for sustained hypersonic flight are still evolving. Scramjet engines, which compress incoming air through the aircraft's speed, rather than with mechanical compressors, show promise but remain experimental. Programs like the Hypersonic Air Breathing Weapon Concept, HAWC, are working to mature these technologies. 
What would these speeds mean in practical terms? A hypersonic fighter could respond to threats anywhere in the world in minutes rather than hours. It could strike with precision before an adversary even knew it was coming, fundamentally changing the dynamics of air power projection. But perhaps the most revolutionary aspect is the aircraft's ability to operate in both air and space domains. This brings us to our next capability, space operations. The ability to operate beyond Earth's atmosphere would give these seventh-generation fighters capabilities no current aircraft possesses. Imagine fighters that could patrol the edge of space, providing defense for America's critical satellite infrastructure. With adversaries like China and Russia developing anti-satellite weapons, the ability to rapidly deploy protective assets to space would be invaluable. These fighters could perform unprecedented missile defense operations. With the appropriate speed, networking, and targeting technology, a space-capable fighter could track and intercept enemy ICBMs during their mid-course phase, a capability that would transform strategic missile defense. Surveillance from the edge of space would provide intelligence-gathering capabilities far beyond what's possible today. These aircraft could observe vast areas of enemy territory without ever crossing international borders. But operating in space brings significant challenges. The aircraft would need protection against cosmic radiation, systems for managing the atmosphere-space transition, and propulsion systems suited to environments with little or no air. The Pentagon's interest in these capabilities isn't merely theoretical. Initiatives like the Air Force's Mayhem Project demonstrate growing investment in aircraft that can operate at the boundary between air and space. What do you think this means for the future of warfare? Would space become the new high ground in military operations? Perhaps the most science fiction-like aspect of these future fighters is their planned armament. Directed energy weapons, particularly high-powered lasers. The Air Force Research Laboratory has been working for years on miniaturizing expeditionary electrical power sources sufficient to power laser weapons that could incinerate targets like ICBMs in space. These aren't the slow-charging, limited-range lasers of today's experimental platforms. These would be weapons capable of delivering enough energy to burn a hole through the metal of an enemy missile in seconds. With proper high-speed networking with satellites and ground sensors, a laser-armed fighter might be able to maneuver into position to see, track, and destroy traveling ICBMs or even hypersonic weapons, a capability no current defense system can achieve reliably. These laser systems would also provide effectively unlimited ammunition, limited only by power supply, solving one of the most significant constraints of current fighter aircraft, weapon payload. The Missile Defense Agency is already working on the kind of power scaling necessary for these applications, and defense contractors like Raytheon are developing advanced seekers capable of discerning actual threats from decoys and debris in the cluttered space environment. Could these developments finally realize the dream of a reliable defense against ballistic missiles? The implications for strategic stability would be enormous. The seventh generation fighter will be as much about computing power as it is about firepower. Advanced artificial intelligence will be critical for managing the extreme speeds and complex missions these aircraft will undertake. Reaction times at hypersonic speeds are simply too fast for human pilots to manage alone requiring AI assistance or even autonomous operation for many tasks. Generative AI could offer autonomous decision-making capabilities in real time, analyzing vast amounts of sensor data, identifying potential threats and proposing optimal engagement strategies faster than any human could. Some unmanned fighters with AI systems have already outperformed human pilots in simulated dogfights. By the 2050s, these systems will be far more sophisticated potentially capable of conducting entire missions autonomously. However, military planners recognize there are elements of human cognition, emotion, intuition, and judgment that mathematical algorithms cannot replicate. This is why these systems will likely remain human in the loop for critical decisions, especially those involving the use of lethal force. The integration of AI with human pilots creates what some military theorists call Centaur Warfare, the combination of human judgment with machine speed and precision, creating capabilities greater than either could achieve alone. How comfortable would you be with AI systems having this level of control over advanced military aircraft?
The debate around autonomous weapon systems continues to evolve alongside the technology itself. Stealth has been the defining characteristic of fifth-generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35. For the seventh generation, stealth will need to evolve significantly to counter increasingly sophisticated detection systems. Future radar systems will operate across multiple frequencies simultaneously, making current stealth designs less effective. To counter this, seventh generation fighters will likely incorporate active stealth measures that can adapt to different detection methods in real time. Quantum radar, still in early development, threatens to defeat conventional stealth by using quantum entanglement to detect even the stealthiest aircraft. Countering such technology will require completely new approaches to remaining undetected. Miniaturization of sensors, computers, and weapons could enable much smaller aircraft with inherently lower signatures while maintaining or exceeding the capabilities of larger platforms. Some experts suggest 7th generation fighters might be significantly smaller than today's aircraft. Thermal management will be crucial, especially for hypersonic aircraft that generate enormous heat. Advanced cooling systems and heat dissipating materials will be essential not just for function but for remaining undetected by infrared sensors. The cat and mouse game between stealth and counter stealth technologies continues to drive innovation pushing both offensive and defensive capabilities forward in an endless cycle of measure and countermeasure. No fighter, no matter how advanced, fights alone. The seventh generation concept envisions aircraft that are nodes in a vast, resilient battle network, spanning air, space, land, sea, and cyberspace. These fighters would serve as forward nodes in a complex network, sharing sensor data with other platforms, from satellites to surface ships to ground forces. This collaborative sensing would provide an unprecedented common operating picture, allowing for coordinated actions across domains. Combat collaborative aircraft, autonomous drones designed to work with crewed fighters, will likely play a key role. These loyal wingmen could extend the fighter's sensing range, serve as decoys or carry additional weapons, multiplying the effectiveness of each manned platform. Secure, jam-resistant communications will be essential, with fighters potentially acting as communication relays between forces on Earth and space-based assets when traditional communications are disrupted. The fighters would also integrate with kill vehicles, being engineered with advanced seekers capable of discerning decoys from actual threats. Companies like Raytheon are already developing exo-atmospheric kill vehicle sensors that can pinpoint ICBMs from cluttered space environments. This networked approach represents a fundamental shift in air combat, from platform-centric to network-centric warfare, where the full capability of any system depends on its connections to the larger battle network. The development of seventh-generation fighters isn't happening in isolation. It's part of a global technology race with profound geopolitical implications. The United States, China, and Russia are all investing heavily in next-generation military aerospace technologies. China is working on advanced projects through AVIC Aviation Industry Corporation of China, while Russia is developing concepts under its PAKDP program, successor to the MiG-31. America's allies are also involved. The United Kingdom's Tempest program and France's Space Command are following similar trajectories and could potentially collaborate with the United States on compatible technologies. The first nation to field a viable hypersonic, space-capable fighter would gain a significant strategic advantage, particularly in protecting space infrastructure and potentially neutralizing adversary satellites. This could intensify rivalry between major powers and trigger a new era of space militarization. Military alliances like NATO will need to adapt their doctrines to incorporate these new capabilities. The establishment of coordination and collective defense protocols in space will become a central issue in international military cooperation. The cost of developing these advanced systems is staggering, potentially hundreds of billions of dollars. Only the wealthiest and most technologically advanced nations will be able to compete in this new dimension of air and space combat. Will these developments lead to a more stable world through mutual deterrence or will they spark a dangerous new arms race? The answer remains to be seen. Despite the promising potential of seventh-generation fighters, significant challenges must be overcome before these concepts become reality. The technological hurdles are immense, 
Materials that can withstand the extreme temperatures of hypersonic flight and re-entry are still being developed. The miniaturization of power sources for laser weapons remains a significant challenge. Creating AI systems reliable enough for combat operations presents both technical and ethical dilemmas. The costs involved are equally daunting. The current NGAD program for sixth-generation fighters is estimated at over $100 billion, and a seventh-generation program would likely exceed that substantially. In an era of budget constraints, sustaining such investment over decades won't be easy. There are also questions about international law and norms regarding the militarization of space. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty prohibits placing weapons of mass destruction in orbit, but doesn't explicitly ban conventional weapons or military operations in space. As these capabilities develop, new international agreements may be needed. Human factors present another set of challenges. Can pilots physically withstand the stresses of hypersonic flight and space operations? Will the training pipeline be able to produce aviators with the skills needed to operate these complex systems? These questions remain open. Despite these obstacles, history shows that with proper investment, political will and time, technological barriers that once seemed insurmountable can be overcome. The question isn't if these challenges can be solved, but when and by whom. So when might we see these revolutionary aircraft take to the skies and beyond? Most defense analysts suggest that seventh generation fighters won't be operational until the 2050s at the earliest. This timeline assumes continued investment in key enabling technologies like hypersonic propulsion, directed energy weapons, and aerospace materials. The development cycle will likely follow a pattern similar to previous generations. Basic research and concept development is already underway at institutions like the Air Force Research Laboratory and DARPA. Technology demonstrators will likely appear in the 2030s, proving key concepts like hypersonic manned flight or space transition. Prototype aircraft might emerge in the 2040s, integrating multiple advanced technologies into functioning systems. Initial operational capability could potentially be achieved by the 2050s, with full deployment in the following decade. This extended timeline reflects both the technical challenges involved and the realities of defense acquisition cycles. Even the current sixth-generation NGAD program isn't expected to reach full operational capability until the mid-2030s. It's worth noting that breakthrough technologies or international competition could accelerate this timeline. Just as the Soviet launch of Sputnik spurred American space efforts in the 1950s, a significant advance by a peer competitor could drive faster development. What technological developments do you think might change this expected timeline? The USAF's vision for seventh generation fighters represents the convergence of multiple revolutionary technologies. Hypersonic flight, space operations, directed energy weapons, artificial intelligence, and advanced stealth. Together, these capabilities would transform not just air combat, but warfare across all domains. These aircraft would provide unprecedented strategic options, from rapid global strike to space control to missile defense, fundamentally altering military balance and doctrine. They would ensure American air dominance well into the latter half of this century, maintaining the technological edge that has been crucial to national security since World War II. While the challenges are significant and the timeline extended, the history of aviation has consistently proven that what seems impossible today becomes routine tomorrow. From the Wright brothers, 12 seconds of flight to landing on the moon took just 66 years within a single human lifetime. The leap from today's fighters to the seventh generation concepts may seem vast, but the pace of technological change continues to accelerate. The commitment of the United States Air Force to maintaining air superiority through continuous innovation remains unwavering. As potential adversaries develop their own advanced capabilities, America's investment in next-generation technologies becomes not just important, but essential. The future of air power extends beyond the air itself, to the edge of space and beyond and the USAF is already working to ensure America leads the way. If you found this look into the future of air warfare fascinating, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth coverage of military technology and strategy. Let us know in the comments which aspect of these future fighters you find most interesting or concerning. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the future of aerial warfare. 
Until next time, keep looking to the skies and beyond.